So the first demo we're going to have comes from Austin, and he's going to take us through the internet settings, so all about Wi-Fi networks. So today I'm going to demonstrate how to manage your Wi-Fi network as we continue our Connected to Galaxy um, Wi-Fi and network settings section. So there are two ways to manage your networks. First is go to settings, then connectivity ah, or okay. internet or connections, different OEMs say different things for the setting. And then you turn on Wi-Fi after you click on the Wi-Fi option or you go to your quick settings panel that is swipe down two times and find this. As you can hear, my phone is not connected to Wi-Fi. It's connected to LTE internet. internet. So you want internet. to long press on internet. this. Internet on connected to Galaxy Watch for fixed connectivity. Navigate up, Airtel, connected LTE, settings, button. Then you have your settings. This is LTE settings. This is not Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, find and connect to Wi-Fi networks, off. Switch. Currently, it's off. I want to wi double tap and select on. Find and connect to Wi-Fi networks, on. It will take some time. Alliston Pinto, Alliston Pinto. So these are Google all the... Network. Uh, networks in my area. Scan QR. Network preference. Saved network. Non-carrier data usage. Two point. Navigate. Now let me show you how to manage Episode your Wi-Fi network because I showed you how to turn it off or turn it on. To manage the Wi-Fi networks, you go into settings. Top flat. Telegram. Skype. Settings. Settings. Search settings. Network and internet. Settings. This Network demo is done on a Pixel 4a running the latest available version of Android 12 January security patch. This February security patch is not released as of this recording being published. So I'll click on Internet. Network and inter Internet. Alliston Pinto underscore router 5G. This should have been called Wi-Fi. I don't know why Google has decided to call it Internet. So here in this window, you get navigate up, fixed connectivity, fixed connectivity, Airtel, settings, Wi-Fi, find and connect to Wi-Fi networks on switch, Alliston Pinto underscore. So you get the same um, Wi-Fi Alliston Pinto things as up, the network preferences. Quick settings. Wi-Fi doesn't turn back on automatically. We'll click on network preferences. Setting. Navigate up. Turn on Wi Fi automatically. Wi Fi will turn back on near high quality safe networks like your home network. Off. Switch. So turn if you on -Fi are on a limited mobile data, I would suggest that you turn this on. This what, what this will do is it will turn on your Wi Fi automatically when you are in range of a high quality or a very strong uh, signal strength saved wi-fi networks if you are in a if you are on a range of high quality strong signal unknown network it will not turn on automatically notify for public networks when automatic connection isn't available on switch this will notify, notify you public, whenever install certificates. public wi-fi is available install certificates some of these wi-fi's mainly the enterprise wi-fi's require you have some certificates to connect to them. Wi-Fi Direct. This is Wi-Fi Direct. Network Preferences. So this is all the network preferences. We'll go back. Ne Settings. Network. Saved network. Non-carrier data. Scan QR code button. You can scan the QR code on the router. Some routers have a... QR code or uh, wherever there are public Wi-Fi is in shopping malls and all on some boards, there are QR codes. You can scan them and connect to them without entering your password or anything. Some public Wi-Fi networks, you may have to enter your phone number and OTP, but others you have to just scan the QR code. Network preferences. Now, if you want to see 
a list of your saved networks which google backs up on your account so even if you format the phone the saved networks won't be lost saved networks you click networks. on the saved networks and Settings. you get a list of saved all networks. your networks that you have ever connected to navigate up other networks aliston pinto underscore router aliston pinto underscore router 5g ao5 ao5 underscore 5g secure network so these are some of the networks that i have connected to there are lots more i'm not going to go into all those lists now let us click on a on the wi-fi network that we are connected to and let's explore what is in there Alistair Pinto underscore router five GHZ connected. What? So as Settings. you heard, I'm on Network a five details. gigahertz uh, uh, Wi-Fi. Navigate modify. Alistair Pinto underscore router five GHZ connected. Forget button. Forget. If you are facing some connectivity issues, you can click on forget. This will forget the network. And then when you have to reconnect, you have to enter the password that is uh, registered or the password that is entered on the router to allow network connectivity and then you can connect. So this will be like connecting your device to that network for the first time. Disconnect button. You can disconnect, disconnect if you want. Share button. Share. You can share this network. And if you click on this. Verify that it's you. Tap to cancel authentication. It button. will uh, ask you for authentication. You put your fingerprint. Authenticated. Share Wi-Fi. Let's explore the shared Wi-Fi network once you have authorized it. Share. Scan this QR code with another device to join. If Alice you want to instantly connect to this network, you can scan the QR code with another phone and join this network. And then under that, the password is given, which is in nearby very button. clear text or you can even do a nearby share so that is the share networks settings share signal strength good signal strength signal strength is good because i'm very very far from the router almost um, two rooms away from the router so the signal strength is not the strongest frequency five gigahertz this frequency. is the frequency. Security, WPA, WPA2 personal. I would security. recommend that you use, if you have not used a security on your router or Wi-Fi, and if you have this at home, I would recommend that you use WPA2 PSK, or if you have a brand new router, or if you want to upgrade, if you are planning to upgrade a router, you should go with a WPA3 PSK, this is the newest standard of security. I would recommend that you go with that. Network usage, detect automatically. This is the network usage. So how are you using the network and what all you're doing on that network and accordingly it will allot the bandwidth. So this is detect automatically. Let's click here and see. Pop up settings, out connected, forget. Disconnect. Security. Dump. Network usage. Pop-up window. Checked. Detect automatically. Settings. Network usage. For some reason, this uh, settings is just closing, so I don't know what is the problem. Privacy. Use randomized MAC default. This, if you want to be private on the network, you can use a randomized MAC, but do, do be aware that some ISPs have a limit of registered Macs in their list of uh, connectivity. And if you use a lot of random Macs, then you may just hit the limit or there may be some problems. So it's best to ask your ISP if you should enable this option. Auto connect, allow connection to this network when in range, on, switch. This you can turn on or off. If you are on an unknown network, I would suggest that you turn it off because it's for security reason. But if you're in a home network or office network or some known networks, then you can leave it on. It's on by default when you connect. 
add device. Use a QR code to add a device to this network. Again, it's the same thing as share network. You can add another device to the network using QR code. Network details, heading. Network details. This is all the technical details. We'll just skim over them. Type Wi-Fi 5. Type. So type is Wi-Fi 5 because the 5 gigahertz. Randomized MAC address, 96. That is the randomized MAC. This IP is address. not public IP. This is the IP that your router has given you. So it's okay. Under the uh, under your IP, the next option is your gateway. This will be the default IP address of your router. Subnet mask. 255.255.255.0. This is a standard subnet, subnet mask. Um, DNS FE8062634 CFF FEAC A611% WLAN 0. This is using an IP6 for DNS. And again, the gateway will be your router's IP address at the end, or it depends on the ISP. Some ISPs use. Uh, Google DNS, some ISPs use their own DNS. Another recommendation, and I know this is not a Wi-Fi podcast, but if you want to see real high speeds in networking, and if your ISP does not use Google DNS or um, Open DNS or whatever, you should change to Google DNS. The DNS address is uh, primary DNS address is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And second DNS address is 8.8.4.4. What happens is the ISP's DNS gets overloaded. They do not have enough bandwidth. So you get slow network or slow site loads and all at peak time. Off. And Google silent. has a lot of bandwidth. So you get uh, pretty amazing results. Sometimes not so amazing results, but sometimes amazing results. So you need to play with it. Before playing with this, take a backup of your router. Transmit link speed, 390 megabits per second. This is your transmit link speed. This is how much data your device can transmit to other devices in the network. Receive link speed, 351 megabits per second. So this, this is the speed that other devices can send to your device. It depends how strong the signal is. And also depends on the frequency. If you use a 2.4 gigahertz network, it should be around 54 to 58 to 80 around. But uh, 5 gigahertz will give you a lot and 6 gigahertz will give you even more. IPv6 addresses, heading. IPv6 this is IPv6 addresses. So that is it from the Wi-Fi window. And this is the demo on how to manage your Wi-Fi network. I hope you have enjoyed this demo and hope these tips that I've given you will be useful. Thanks, Austin. I've got to say, I, I don't like what Google has done here. I said this last week, I think. Um, I don't think the labels are as helpful as they could be here. I would, I would have, I think, something like Wi-Fi right up front on my network and internet screens. I wouldn't bury it in internet. Uh, I think I think it could be a lot more helpful and user friendly than it is, but that's just my view. You know, you're right, uh, Ed. Like I said last week, I think what Google fails to do is the fact that they fail to keep things consistent. So you're kind of getting used to something, and in the next iteration, things get changed or get regrouped. You don't expect people to always. Uh, have to learn something new again and i wish they stopped doing that but i totally understand what you're saying